Hello everyone, Editing Omnia here. This is part two of my coverage of the Rosa Ray Ramsey call. If you are at all lost or confused about this video and the contents within it, the first part of this series is linked in the card on the top right hand corner of this video and in the description box below for your reference. That video provides the context necessary for you to understand the happenings of this call. That being said, if you've already watched part one, welcome back. Once again, a reminder that Hopeless Peaches uses he, they pronouns exclusively so my apologies for the fact that I misgender them throughout the coverage of this call. I filmed these clips prior to knowing of their pronoun change and I will be referring to Peaches with the correct pronouns in any subsequent video I make on the situation. In part one, we covered the first two hours of the Rosa Ray Ramsey Senate server voice call. This video covers the last two hours. We all know how much of a shit show this is, so let's continue where we last left off. Do it again and I will find your family. I will tell them what you were doing. I will tell them all the nonsense you said. And usually I have a caveat if I find out like they're homo or something or they might hurt you if i find out your parents hate gay people i'm not gonna care okay i feel like i have some credence to what i'm saying as someone who was literally outed by my abuser to my homophobic parents and that's why i don't speak to my parents anymore um you saying that to a queer disabled woman is a death sentence. You stating that says a lot about what you want to have happen to Rosa. You literally don't care. You are literally saying you do not care if this queer disabled woman gets disowned where she relies on a caretaker, by the way. She relies on her parents to live as a result of her disability. And you are saying that you would literally not care to out her to her homophobic parents. You are saying that you do not care if she gets disowned. Leo, do you understand what that means and what that looks like? I am someone who was outed by my abuser to my homophobic parents. I don't speak to my parents anymore. Everything around me is all me, okay? Everything about me is self-created. I was disowned at 20 years old, okay? Because I'm gay. Because my abuser wanted to isolate me from my parents. Because if he could isolate me from my parents, he could isolate me from my support system, and then it would be easier for me to be abused. And so as someone who literally had to go through that, I'm just saying that you saying that is a death sentence. You are saying that you do not care if Rosa gets disowned, tossed out, and then has to live on the streets or fucking get hurt because she doesn't have anyone to rely on and she needs someone to rely on for her disability. You are disgusting and I'm very ashamed. Not at this point, you're 30. You're 30 years old and I will not accept any excuses because autism and seizures and epilepsy do not stop you from having a solid moral center. That's a choice you made. You chose comfort over, over the safety of children and for a 30 year old that is disgusting. You know what I think is disgusting, Leo? You. I think you're disgusting. I think your behavior is disgusting because you don't care about putting things in context to what people go through and what people's limitations are and how people's disabilities affect their ability to understand and perceive the world around them and how things are happening. You don't give a fuck. You are putting standards for someone who you know can't reach them due to certain life circumstances that are out of their control and you are getting mad at them for not hitting those standards that is disgusting and you're 40 you're 40 years old and you still don't know how to fucking be nuanced please not only will i do that i also now have information about where you live because you have a facebook account that i do know and i am aware of and you're going to start getting a lottery blogs from me to a lot of other people that are not gonna be happy about your nonsense. Because here's the thing, people on my side of, of reality, people in conscious reality with moral values, don't take a lot of people making excuses like you do at all. And you don't know how quickly that's gonna spread in your town. Soon, sooner you might be known as Rosa, the, the child predator enabler in your own hometown. And frankly, couldn't happen to a better person. The only person more culpable other than Star Giant is Neko Pond themselves. So congratulations. You're the bronze medal here. Star's the silver. Negopon's the gold. Aren't you smart? You've accomplished nothing. You have not redeemed yourself, and you never will because you refuse to take actual accountability. Instead, you want to blame conditions that were well within your control. These uh, moral values that you speak of, are they in the room with us right now? This conscious reality, is it in our presence today? Because I don't see it. You don't act it. 
You don't have it. You want to act like you do, but you don't. I don't see the moral values and I don't see the conscious reality. You are not the child of God. You are not fucking holier than thou. I do not understand how you really think that you are just the pinnacle. Like you're just better. You're not. You're worse. <laughs> you're dishonest, disingenuous, disgusting, loud. Never be around or talk to children again or I will find out and it will be ugly. Yeah, and to add to that, uh... Do you have any like young kids in your family? No, bi no bitch boy tears, Rosa. Answer the question. I don't want anyone to know. It's my life. Oh, God. oh no, my boo hoo. Business. Where's oh? Sorry, Rosa. I need to stop you there. I think I misplaced my small violin. Who gives <clears throat> a flying fuck? Please, it's my life. Oh, it's uh, your your okay. Your life. It's what? my family, and it's my business. Your life, your family, your boo-hoo little bitch boy tears. It didn't matter that kids were being preyed upon. Their life doesn't matter. Fuck those kids, am I right? Man, fuck them kids, bro. But you, you're so little precious. So when I ask you, and I'll ask you one more time, so dry your fucking tears, I want to ask a question because I want to make a point. Is there any kids in your family? <laughs> Y'all are literally acting like she's Nekopon. Y'all are literally acting like she's the predator. I think you're getting confused. And I don't appreciate the aggressive nature that they're exhibiting whatsoever. Do you have any kids in your family? Do you have any young kids in your family? Who are you? Why do you want to know everything about my life? You're a fucking weirdo. Just what does my family have to do with this? Tell me. Do you, do, you, do you not understand? Do you not understand what I'm asking you? I'm going to take that as a yes, okay? Considering you're crying now. So I'm going to move on to my next point. Would you be very happy if you found out that your that the kids in your family were preyed upon? I and, wouldn't. And someone... I wouldn't. No, you wouldn't be very happy now, would you? Suddenly the tears roll. Would you say that if a couple of years passed, it wouldn't matter anymore? No. No, you wouldn't. Now, would you be very happy if you were to find out the people involved who knew about the situation but didn't do anything? No. No. Okay, so is that why you're crying? Because people would find out that you were one of those people? Just, I don't want anyone digging into my personal life. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter. Because you are the one who found it perfectly acceptable <laughs> to say that the trauma of other people doesn't matter. And you just let it on by because you had to watch Star Wars. People were being mean to you on Twitter. And your personal life got in the way. Oh, what do you freaking do? Well, so, not just that. Not just that. It's interesting how, well, nobody just, needs to know that it's your personal life is an excuse when it comes to consequences, but you just, have no problem throwing your, the, shut your dumb slut mouth. I hate them. I hate them both. You guys suck. You guys suck. And you never said sorry either. That's the other thing that pisses me off about this call. They never said sorry to Rosa, ever. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. It's amazing that you're crying more now because you think people will find out than before when you were literally being spoken to by one of the people who've been affected by your choices. Not your lack of ability, not your lack of opportunity, but your active choices to not give a shit. You weren't crying then, you were you know, pretending that you were having your little anime moment, like fucking war flashbacks, holy moly. But now no, you're it crying. Was true. It was true. Yeah, but you show way more emotion now and you're doing a whole lot more pleading. Your apology meant jack shit. You are completely monotone. But now all of a sudden it's, oh, please, please don't tell my family. I don't need them to know that I just let predators get away because pe people being mean on Twitter and it got in the way of my marathon of Star Wars. But just... Just I'll tell you what, Rosa. I'll tell you what, Rosa. I just I'll have comfort. plans. Shut it. Shut it. I don't care about your stupid plans. I don't care about any of that. If you get into a car crash tomorrow, I'm not going to cry. But I'll tell you what, I'll meet you halfway on something, all right? I'll compromise with you. We're going to go ahead and file it away as forgiven and forgotten on one condition. Are you paying attention? Yes. Get your mom and call. <laughs> Not paternalistic at all, not coercive control at all. We're the pinnacle of human morality. We just 
want to get your mom and call not to threaten you, not to harm you, but you know, for like good reason. I can't tell you what those reasons are, but like for good reason. At this point, they just start to like hyper focus on getting her mom and call and it just goes to shit, dude. From here on out, it goes to shit. I can't. Hey, Dan, I just, why can't. can't you do it, Rosa? Why can't you do it? Please. Why can't you I do it? I don't want me. my family to get involved. Are you a coward? They're already involved. You use um, them as cover for your excuses. If, no, 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 please. shut, shut. I said, please. it is your one chance. Now, if you're still gonna continue on and pretend that you actually care, then it's obvious you don't because you're not willing to be honest about things. You're not willing to have that sacrifice. No, no, you can't let them know because they might take away your internet, which is what you're actually concerned Please. about. You don't actually care about kids. You don't actually care about being sorry. All you care about is whether or not you get to have fun on the internet. And I want you to admit it. I want you to tell us right now that you're more concerned about whether or not you get to stay on the internet than you are the fact that you hurt people. I want to know right now. Tell us. Admit it. Because you can either admit it or you can go get your mom. One of the two. There is no I third just option don't want you. any any of my family in. I'm sorry. Did I say that I care if you want your family involved, or did I give you I one don't. or two options? Did I give you I one or two options? I gave you one or two options. Get hey, involved. Hey, slut hole. I gave you two options. Which ones are going to be? Are you going to get her involved, or are you going to admit that you just don't care about the kids? You just care about your own comfort. I just don't know. Please. Oh, you don't know. I told you. You have just two choices let here. Me leave. You had two choices. Which one's it going to be? You're not leaving until you let make a choice. Go. You're not leaving until you make a choice. Please let me go. Did I stutter? Do you have a hard time paying attention? I'm not your dad. I'm not going to spoon feed it to you. I said you have two choices. Take a pick. Which one is it? I just don't know, but please yeah, let me go. Yeah, you do. You know full well. You're lying. You lying piece of garbage. Please. You just don't want consequences for your evil actions, you worthless scumbag. You predator abater. You pedophile apologist. I am not... But there you are. please let me there you leave. Are. Nope, you're not leaving until Zayn right. talks to you. That's my least favorite clip in the call. It's very fucked up. It, it gets so bad. This call gets so bad so quickly. It's like really depressing. I, I hated that clip. That clip was one of the worst ones. And then they just go on to talk to Zaid, who's like misanthropony or whatever the fuck his name is. Literally, then they just go into a conversation about why they disagree about Star Wars opinions, which is the least relevant thing ever, which is why I just cut the whole thing out. <laughs> I cut that whole part out of the call, but this is what happens afterwards. Besides, I still remember the nightmares. What nightmares? What am I doing that is causing you to have nightmares? These nightmares that I kept having, the trauma that The trauma stuck of with being me. called out for being an idiot? No, the trauma of the the abuse that I suffered. What abuse have you been suffering? We're not abusing you. We're holding you accountable for being a horrible person with fucked up moral values. <laughs> Hold on, let a cook. I want to know this backstory. I've been waiting for so long for the anime backstory. Let's go. Let's go, anime slut hole backstory. Rosa, tell us, the, tell us about the nightmares. They're, they're just too gruesome to talk about. No, no, I really want to know. I... I, I, I fucking have been waiting for this moment. Tell me. I need this. We're all adults. No, right? come on. I can only tell them to those that that I trust. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, no, but wait, hold on. I I have to, this will make you trust me real easy. I'm I'm part of the LGBT, so you can trust me easy, so go tell me. I know. But... I got my drink poured. Go ahead. Well, uh, come on, Naruto. Start. I think we could tell that this woman, Peaches, Hopeless Peaches, she's unwell. She is unwell, and I really hope she can get her shit figured out. Why are you yelling? You need to drink less, please. I'm scared. Stop. The fuck is wrong with you? I don't want you to say anything that sounds like bullshit because let me tell you, my friend Leah, she has nightmares too. So if you're saying anything that sounds like you're faking it or trying to get sympathy from people, I will know it. It isn't sympathy or anything. What I experienced was real. Okay, it go was ahead. Actually real. I've got my but drink poured. How can I'm I ready. tell it to anyone who decides to blackmail me? You know, being. Blackmail you dumb cunt, now tell us. Who decides of wanting to get my family involved. This oh. is why I cannot trust anyone. This is why I just want to leave. 
Yeah, because uh, Rosa, just to remind you of what happened just a couple minutes ago, if you leave the call, you, Lyo did give you a choice. Was that your choice to just leave and not have your mom on the call and instead uh, hope and pray that your little seizures don't make you suddenly forget that you shouldn't be schizo posting online? Because you do know what happens if that goes on, right? So anyway, I've got my drink poured. I'm sat back. I'm part of the LGBT, so you want to be besties with me. Let it rip. Out of my backstory. Let's go. I just cannot tell. Because they're not real. I've got it. Okay. Cool. It's because you're a coward. <laughs> no. It's just that I cannot trust anyone. I'm the type of person who believes that alcohol and drugs and, you know, vices bring out the true nature of someone, like the true essence of someone. And if they're evil when they're drunk or they're evil when they're high, that's their true nature. And like getting this from her um, tells me that her true nature is just a little shitty. Like she's just like a little piece of shit. Just a little bit, like, you're a bitch. If you're gonna be like that, just be that way alone. Do that away from people, please, because what the fuck is this? I just don't know what to say. You don't know what to say. After you were exposed for harboring a predator in but your server for months. It's not her server. She said that already. After you allowed all of those horrible things to happen Just to people like, uh, Endo. Get mad at fucking Nekopon, the person who groomed Endo. After you continue to associate with Star Giant, after what you found out about them, you don't know what to say. It's just confusing. It's confusing because you trust. have such a tiny brain. I wish I could have you thrown into an asylum because you are that insane. I just don't know who to trust. Oh, I don't, I don't, dis I, I actually disagree. I don't think she's insane. You see, I picked up something here. The truth is, this is what she does when she doesn't want to do something. She doesn't want to face it because it's worked with her parents and she just says she's confused enough. They'll get frustrated and do it for her. That's yeah, why she keeps saying it. Yeah, because I've noticed something as well, uh, Rosa. You know how you were... Uh, on your knees groveling to Lyo just a few minutes ago because he said that he would ring your mummy and you're crying and the moment Zaid started talking to you and said you snapped back into just your normal speaking tone I, I caught up on that do you really think that everyone's just suddenly forgot? You're not out of the awkward situation <laughs> Just, You're such a weasley little liar, Rosa You're Just so please Just Rosa, please There it no. is, there it is again <laughs> Stop begging for our forgiveness and our mercy because you kept saying you're a. Do you really think you're a victim in this situation? Well, not. She'll make herself one. She really wants to be one. It's the only way she thinks she can get any cloud or power because that's what all the other idiots she follows on the internet do. The nightmares will never end. I think it's really fucked up that Peaches really gets mad at people like me for miswording themselves or not really being able to communicate what they're trying to say eloquently to the point where she finds it okay and thinks that she can get off scot-free by making fun of people who literally explained that they get nightmares from their PTSD and being like, the nightmares will never end because I don't think that what you get nightmares for is not good enough to have trauma over. You're literally worse than every fucking person you critique for gatekeeping trauma. It's fucking crazy that you are confident enough to be acting like that. Why the fuck did you ever critique me for saying that, you know, severity, certain things need to be more severe for you to get trauma? Hi, Editing Omnia here. Apologies for the jump scare. I just wanted to insert the exact clip I'm referencing here, the one from my privated video titled The Commentary Community's Biggest Flaw, both for transparency's sake and so that everyone is on the same page about what exactly I'm talking about and referencing at this point in the video. I recognize that this clip is oversimplified as hell and that trauma is a much more complex and subjective experience than what is outlined here, but the last thing I want to do is hide from my actions or the things I've said, and since I reference back to it in this clip, I think it's important to be forthcoming about it, so a fair warning, I'll be inserting it here. I won't be including the full-length clip, just the parts that I think are most relevant to what I'm mentioning in this video, but I recognize there was more to this and those parts are also bad. Feel free to skip this 
clip if you hate it that much, but like I said, I'd rather be forthcoming and transparent about the fact that I said this than to act like I'm this perfect person who is incapable of miscommunicating or being reductive in regards to trauma myself. The important part is that since this video, I've been very diligent about making sure that my intentions are relayed clearly to my audience. I've learned how to add disclaimers about things and to be generous in doing so to prevent myself from being misunderstood and generally try to act in a more responsible and self-aware way. Apologies again that this clip hurt members of my audience when I released it two years ago. Today, in this clip, we're gonna go through the differences between drama and trauma. When you search up trauma on Google, this is what comes up. A deeply distressing or disturbing experience. Emotional shock following a stressful event or a physical injury, which may be associated with physical shock and sometimes leads to long-term neurosis. Physical injury. When you search up drama on Google, this is what the definition is. A play for theater, radio, or television. An exciting, emotional, or unexpected series of events or set of circumstances. When you look at the second definition of drama, you can kind of see that there is a little bit of similarity, right? It's a exciting, emotional, or unexpected series of events or sets of circumstances. And that's kind of similar to trauma, right? But I would say the main and easy litmus test between trauma and drama is severity, intensity. Always look at how severe or intense that event is. And there tends to be other symptoms of trauma more so than there is of drama. And that tends to show up somatically. So what I mean by that is that when something traumatic happens to someone, that tends to show up in their body or the way that they behave. So with someone who has experienced a traumatic event, they may get diagnosed with PTSD, they may need increased therapy or medication. Sometimes they have changes in behavior like somatic changes, for example, weight loss or weight gain. Sometimes they have a lot of nightmares or hallucinations. They can have insomnia, stuff like that. That is often a sign of trauma. Whereas with drama, there tends to be a lot less physical symptoms, though there can be, right? There's just tends to be less intensity, less severity. And that's why I say when you want to distinguish between trauma and drama, the easiest way is to run a litmus test about how severe it is. You got mad at me for that. And here you are making fun of someone who literally said that their PTSD nightmares are fucking impacting their mental health. You know what is a nightmare? This this call this whole thing the way you're acting you're a nightmare this is a nightmare all of this is a nightmare i'm literally wanting to wake up i i really can't wait for the part where we speak to your mother because maybe she'll tell us about the nightmares someone needs to give this bitch a glass of water she needs a glass of water and to take her to bed she is drunk out her ass i can tell I asked you where I you know. are right now, you mushed mouth retard. Where are you right now? Actually, I apologize again for calling you that because, again, people with actual mental handicaps are a lot smarter than you. So where are you right now? Tell me. I literally hate this clip. This is like one of the many worst clips in this call, but this one is like takes the cake. First of all, the way he said, tell me. Tell me. Sounds like that um meme, that Joe Biden meme where he's like, hush up, boy. Hush up, boy. Hush up, boy. I'll literally play it right now. That shit's so funny. That is what Leo sounded like at the end of this clip. Hush up, boy. Tell me. Hush up, boy. Tell me. Tell me. Hush up, boy. And then on top of that, to say that you're only sorry because people with actual, actual mental handicaps are a lot smarter than Rosa is in insane not only did you just call someone that you know is autistic that you know has seizures that you know is epileptic you literally only said sorry because people with actual mental handicaps are a lot smarter than she is. Y'all won't give her shit. Y'all won't give her shit. Y'all won't even give her her disability. Despite y'all knowing that she has it, y'all won't give her shit. It's crazy. It's so 
fucking crazy. Collect my thoughts on this situation. Well, I imagine that takes a very long fucking time for you. You don't seem like somebody who can really think. That's Coyote Lovely. Coyote enters the chat. This is where it gets real bad. This gets, this, from this point on after Coyote enters, it gets horrible. Really bad. Real bad. Uh, the ableism goes from like 0 to 100 in a minute. Just cause Coyote is now in the call. Trust. Just look. Uh, Coyote, if it, if it helps you for any context, this little bitch started pretending to cry when when Lyo and I think they I think they saw it as a false threat about getting a mum in call. And then the moment the conversation moved because Saeed started talking, they snapped back into normalcy. So yeah, this person just bitches and pretends that they're having a panic attack, pretends they're crying, anything to get through because their little mummy didn't raise them right. Since you want to talk about little mommies, right? You want to talk about people's moms and how well they raise their children. What about your mom? Because your mom kind of raised a bitch. Your mom raised a bitch. Since you want to talk about Rosa's mom not raising her right. What about your mom? What about your mom? Hmm? Um, yeah, your mom raised a bitch. Your mom raised a bitch. Uh, literally also just before this clip starts, just trigger warning for like incessant R word. Like incessant, like too much, like um eight times probably, like all at once. Just letting you know. Everybody has their own opinions. Yeah, no I fucking shit, retard. That. No shit, retard. No shit, retard. I'm asking why you won't even abide your own standards. And I'm not going to apologize for calling you a retard because I think you are genuinely mentally fucking retarded. So I answer the question, retard. How come you won't respect everyone else's opinions if you think everyone should have their opinions respected? Answer the question, retard. Come on, I retard. Answer me. Answer me, retard. What, what did I say? What did, what did I say about Coyote? Uh, what did I say about Coyote entering the chat and then, you know, the ableism going from zero to 100? Yeah, that, that clip, that one that you just listened to, that's exactly what I was referring to. So, uh... I don't care. I literally just told you to go get your mother. I told you. I can't. I don't want go my tell. personal life getting in the way. No, Get your this mother. isn't about your personal life. This is about you being worried that you're going to be humiliated and embarrassed because you were exposed for doing a lot of degenerate things and having bad moral values. You really want to redeem yourself. This is your shot. Get your mother. I can't. Why can't you? I just can't. There's a difference between can't and not wanting to. You liar. You just don't want to. You can. You know where she is right now. You can go get her and bring her in here or bring the phone to her. You don't want to. Please. So stop using the wrong word, you lying, disingenuous sack of child predator enabling crap. I'm getting so depressed. I'm getting so sad. This is so sad. I, it's like, I watched this back. I transcribed half the call, more than half. I literally watched this over and over again, just like getting the clips and like transcribing and everything. And it really hurts me inside to think that there are 60 people sitting in this call as it's going on in real time and no one did shit until the end. No one did shit until like the last 30 minutes. And it's like, Y'all watched this person who people had mentioned multiple times throughout the call. Leia mentioned that she had possible special needs. Leo said that she had autism and was on the spectrum. She said that she was epileptic and had seizures that caused memory loss. It was very obvious from the very beginning of the call that she had a disability and like one that is severe enough to cause her to stay at home and to live with her mom and I just can't understand how there were literally 60 people sitting here being like complicit inactive bystander like you want to talk about how Rosa didn't do enough to ban Nekopon in a server that she's not even fucking an owner of whether she had permissions or not all y'all are sitting here in this call with the ability to unmute at any point and y'all don't you want to talk about how Rosa's a shitty inactive bystander what makes y'all any different what makes y'all better than her it's insane to me that there are over 60 people in this fucking call and no one said anything until the end. I just can't wrap my head around the fact that that actually, this actually occurred and that there were that many people witnessing it happen and did dick, did jack shit. How that is possible makes me very sad.
makes me like deeply depressed like i'm going to bed like i after this shit i'm not even editing what i'm doing right now i'm going to bed because i'm disturbed and disenfranchised and very sad de depressed even it's fucked everyone in here was complicit until fucking someone else at the end said something about it and the fact that someone didn't say anything for that long really really just lyle he wondering um is there a way we can get rosa's dms with star giant because i'm low key wondering. oh there 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 is a way but good luck trying to walk this mush brain through it that's true i'm wondering hey. rosa, will you give me those dms between you and star because you know the fact that you're telling me that you you try to talk about nekapon with star before no, no, what we can do is, because little slut hole here won't be able to understand, uh, well, my mum can walk her through it. You know, I talk. Come I on, it. Rosa. Or you could give us your login info. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. I can't, but I can no, you can, you just don't you want to. Our conversation, but I can give you our conversation. Get your mum, you dumb slut. Speaking specifically about peaches here, I'm sorry if anyone's like, Hana, that's too much of an extreme comparison. I genuinely think that peaches is on the same level as creep show art. This behavior is fucking weird and it's fucking parasocial. To be insisting so hard that you want this disabled woman who relies on her mother as a caretaker to come in a call over some discord shit. She didn't ban some guy or some person in someone else's server whether or not she had the permission or not you want to get her mother in call over this is literally weird like i personally think that it's literally weird that all of these people think that that is remotely okay in any way shape or form rosa excuse me hello uh yeah. i would I want your mum here because I want to ask her why she stopped her own child from reporting a child predator because apparently your personal life got in the way of that. I want to ask your mum, who's apparently more competent than you, why she would allow that kind of thing to happen. That is something that is personal that I have to deal with on my own. Yeah, but guess what? You already tried to ruin the life of other people by not helping victims. What? Why is why is people like Endo's life absolute shit to you that doesn't matter? Actually, to a point where even their trauma just magically disappears within a year. But with you, oh, you have to be respected. Your personal life really has to be respected. It all oh, it matters, right? So come on, I want to speak to someone competent. I can't. Can anyone defend this shit? Like, really, I don't understand how any single person can tell me that I don't see how this is ableist. This is so clearly ableist. I want to speak to someone competent. You know, because you saw the first couple clips. She was in that shit talking all this shit from the jump. She can't claim that she didn't know that Rosa was disabled. You can't claim you didn't know that she was epileptic. Literally, Peaches was there from the jump. Y'all saw the first couple clips, right? You know she was here since the beginning. And she heard that she said that she is epileptic and has seizures that cause memory loss. And that Leo said that she had autism and that Leia said that she had possible special needs. Peaches is very fucking aware, clearly, that she has special needs and that she has a learning difference. I don't want anyone telling me that this isn't fucking purposeful to say that I want to speak to someone competent. Don't. That was literally targeted. This entire thing is literally just an ableist bully session. Free for all. No one gives a fuck. And that is what this intention was. Y'all didn't care about closure for Endo. Y'all didn't give a shit about how bad she was or not. Y'all didn't care about apologies. Y'all literally just wanted an excuse to bully someone and make them feel small for something that they can't even control. And I don't want anyone telling me otherwise. It's so fucking clear. Peaches was the first person to say that she she was an arsler. She wants to talk to someone competent. Peaches is literally bad faith. So clearly. And all her little simps, if there are any that exist after this shit, keep it to yourself. Because I don't want to hear it. This is deplorable and this is not excusable in any way, shape, or fashion. At all. At all. Hold on. Rosa, are you listening? I can't. Are you Please. listening? Rosa, I'm asking Please. you a question. Are you listening? Come on. Come on, girl. Listen. Listen. Please. Listen. listen. I'm talking. Listen, girl. Come on. Listen. Listen. Okay. Now that you stop begging me like the dog you are, if I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to ask you some questions. If y'all keep up bringing
bringing up my I'm gonna ask you some questions. I'm gonna ask you some questions. I'm I'm gonna ask you some questions. I know you're stupid to try to pay attention. What's your city and state? Like for what? Like, for what? Because she didn't ban a predator in a server that's not her own, that she may or may not have had permissions to do? You guys are fucking insane. The punishment and the fucking crime is disoriented. It's not equal. You literally want to dox her. You want to get her mom in call. You want to find her fucking state, city, Facebook account. All because she didn't do enough to ban someone who she knew was preying on children. Whether or not she could ban it or not, doesn't matter. She just didn't do enough. And now we have to dox her and fucking ruin her life and call her ableistic slurs and fucking slut shame her. And it's fucked. You guys are fucked. Okay? It's peeving. It is anger inducing to watch this and feel like I'm watching this in retrospect. Nothing I could do or say can change anything that happened here. But to witness it is peeving. Like I'm pissed off. Editing Omnia here again. I know I'm not usually this emotionally unregulated about things and I don't usually like to show this level of upset and anger about stuff online, but I felt that this might be important to showcase because it means that I care and I know from the first part of this call and reading a lot of the comments people left on it, many people feel the exact same way I do. I wanted to give pause here and honor this anger by reiterating the fact that we feel anger because we are fiercely compassionate and protective, especially when we witnessing injustice happening. Something my therapist said that really resonates with me is the fact that our anger arises towards things we care about and we should not only validate it, but trust and value it. And in doing so, we shouldn't take it in destructive or violent ways, but to learn how to integrate it with our fierce compassion, care, and love. Through anger, we can work towards sustainable actions that promote justice and equity by remembering that we know ourselves through our anger and that our anger points to the things we care about. Sorry for the tangent, I just felt that it might be valuable to say this because sometimes I feel like my anger shows a less than savory side of me when, in reality, it really shows that this is something I'm passionate about correcting and calling out. And I hope maybe that makes you feel validated in your anger as well if this is a feeling that you are experiencing too. Remember to take breaks, you can always come back to this video whenever you don't have to watch it all in one sitting. Okay, back to the clips. Please, enough with asked, the personal life. I asked you, if I asked you, you keep what on your bringing city my state personal is. life, then I'm just gonna go. And you think that's gonna save you because... I just cannot deal with this anymore. All right, so now I'm gonna hand it over to Baiji. Baiji wanted to interrogate you a little bit. Go ahead, Baiji. You're welcome to. Please, I don't want my personal life out. Trigger warning at this point of the call. If you have triggers relating to eating disorders, in terms of body image, in terms of fat phobia, fat shaming, anything regarding body dysmorphia, body image, this is your heavy trigger warning because this part is all just fat shaming. <laughs> oh, hello, Rosie. <laughs> I am Officer well, I Bayou with the Cyber Police, real name uh, Jonathan T. Markison, and uh, I have a few questions for you, because this is now a legal why? matter. First things first, um, why are you fat? <laughs> it's a key question. I think we'll crack the case understanding that one. You crack something. A scale, maybe. <laughs> How many that was a rhetorical question. It? No, hang on. That wasn't a rhetorical question. Why are you fat, Rosie? <sighs> Just this is a legal matter. with depression. Legal uh, matter. Depression. <laughs> Depression is more reason to be fat. What are you doing to make your... Hang on. Are you depressed that you're fat? I'm asking how you got fat. What have you been eating? I just... Don't know. Why did I know that was coming? I don't know. I just don't know, Coyote. I just don't know. I want to know. I want to know. What are you... No, I want to know. What are you eating? What is your daily caloric intake? You might have to break down what that means because you didn't even know what the word quote means. Okay. Break down like uh, her body breaks down all the well, fucking right. blankies. As, as a no. police officer, I will explain this, Brooke. What if, do you eat a day? Do you eat the pizza? Do you eat the ice cream? Or do you sometimes eat the spaghetti? What do you eat? I am a police officer. You need to tell me legally. Please. I just... Why are you fat? Answer, like, answer the police officer. Yes, answer the totally real but, cyber police officer. I am Jonathan T. Markison. <laughs> Please, y'all are just Answer the question, you fat sack of shit. Why are you fat? Lord. 
This is police brutality. I am the law. Goes without saying that this behavior is disgusting, but I really just want to say since people want to be like this and you think it's fine to comment on other people's bodies and comment on what they eat and laugh about that and how they have to deal with depression and that's how they got fat and so funny, ha ha ha. Bitch, you want to post a photo of your body? Peaches? Leo? You want to talk about fat? I want to see y'all. Post up. I want to see. Because I've never seen y'all's bodies, but I've seen y'all's faces. And I feel like that's good enough indication how the rest of you look. Mm. So you want to be like that? That's fine. But like, I want you to post up. Like, let's post up then. You want to laugh at people for their body image? You want to laugh at people for what they look like? What do you look like? Want to stand up? Fuck you. Literally fuck y'all. You think it's funny to comment on other people's bodies, but won't even fucking show your own. Yeah, you're right. She is, but there's not too much we can do other than call mommy. Wait, and I want to speak to the mother. I want to speak to the mother. Take her fucking drink away. Somebody, please. Can someone please take her fucking alcohol and throw it somewhere far away? that she can't access because she is slurring at this point. Can you tell me sorry? An actual apology? Can you tell me sorry for all those years where I had to watch my friends get groomed? Can, can you tell me yes. sorry about doing nothing? Yes. It's tell just me fucking sorry. sorry. Just can't help but say that I'm sorry. You're lying. All right, I have a better question. Are you sorry that you did it or are you sorry you got caught? <sighs> that, that's too complicated for this I much mouth. No, I want... I want you to respond to Emmy it directly, is. properly. You did what? what Sorry, did you do? Did I... Come on. Come on, girl. What'd you do? I already you told ask. you about the you... situation. No, you didn't. You made excuses for it. And this is yeah, why I don't man. think this person should take your apology with any sort of seriousness to it, you worthless idiot. This is why this, I want this... Emmy's slot hole on the phone. Please. This isn't going anywhere. Oh, that's no, it's not. That's why I want to If it's going anywhere, gonna... then I'm just going to hang up. No, I mean, no, that's fine. We'll I can get a hold of your mom. We'll I can up. get a hold of your mom either way. So, do you want me to call her while she's in the middle of going to bed at night, or do you want me to call her early in the morning? Which way is she more likely to hit you? Please, I don't want my personal life to get in the way. <laughs> not a threat, though. No threats of violence. I'm really good. I'm a good person. I'm the good guy. I'm the good guy. Leo Convoy, you know. I'm a pred hunter. I uh, I protect kids and I'm a good guy. I'm a God-fearing man and um, that's it. Yup. I wish I could delete my Twitter, but I don't remember my password. <laughs> yeah, this came up last call. She's kind of retarded. Real quick, I just whoever's recording this, if you decide to edit it, please put up a sin counter for how many times I say the word retarded. I've said it a lot now. I'm not putting up a sin counter, but um, I did count. It was 11 times so far. And also, please, if 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 you do ever change your mind, please let me know whenever you get a mama slut hole in here, because I, I would love to speak to her. Literally, why? <laughs> like, literally, why? Literally, what did fucking Rosa do to y'all? I just don't get it. I just don't. Yeah, can you, like, repeat to all the new people that are in this call right now what you said about grooming and how it doesn't matter? It's got, like, a little expiration date. Do you still believe that? <laughs> it doesn't matter because it happened a while ago. <laughs> it doesn't matter because it happened a while ago. Who are you quoting? Yourself? The voice in your head? The one that said to you that that's what Rosa meant when she asked how long ago something happened? Because I don't recall Rosa ever saying that. And I would love the timestamp because I spent weeks going through this four hour call. I know everything that fucking was said in this. As you can see, I literally transcribed more than fucking three hours worth of this call. I love the timestamp. Give it. Tell me when she said it doesn't matter because it happened a while ago. Give Here's me. Here's the forecast for tomorrow in New York, Fahrenheit, and a low of 38 degrees. Also, there's a high wind watch in effect on Monday, March 11th from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Thank you, Alexa. as well the extra little cherry on top at the same time as this little bitch saying that grooming has an expiration date and doesn't affect victims uh she was bitching and crying about how she couldn't actually report a child predator and do anything about it and just let him sit in her server the whole time because um 
Oh, whoop to do Someone was saying mean things on Twitter that still has her riled up and have nightmares about to this day. So what you're saying is, according to you, the shit that Creepshow Art did you, you don't have PTSD over and you can't have PTSD over it. What Prison Mate Luke said to you and did to you, you can't have PTSD over that. You can't have nightmares over that. You can't be impacted by that. Your Hopeless Peaches drama in 2020, 2021 is nothing, right? People saying mean things to you on Twitter is just nothing. So you weren't impacted. So what happened to you was fine then. Because, well, it doesn't matter, right? People keep harassing you online. You can't get nightmares about. Is that not exactly what the fuck you're saying? Bitch. But if I ever said that to you seriously, if I said, Peaches, people saying mean things to you on Twitter is not enough for you to be all sad or whatever. People giving you death threats online, people fucking harassing you online, people doubting your grooming story, people just being absolute menaces and hurting you online. It doesn't matter. You have nightmares about that to this day? Are you pussy? You're at an age at this point, you're 24, right? You, you should be old enough to deal with people being mean to you online on Twitter. You should be able to deal with mean words, right? You're 24. You're older than me. People talking mean to you online. Doesn't matter, right? If I fucking actually said that to her and I meant that, people would kill me, okay? People would kill me. I would literally be like, dead. <laughs> like, I'd be like, <laughs> get the coffin like literally so you could say that to rosa but if anyone said that same exact shit to you i already know you'd pop a vein so why is it okay when you do it do you know what it means to reflect on how what you say can actually mm, backfire on the things that you claim to care about publicly because you claim to care about people who were harassed online who were victimized and you know you're a predator hunter right what about you then? Because Rosa's fucking being people being me and her on Twitter is not enough for her PTSD. is not enough for her nightmares. But for you though, you're different. You're different. What happened with you, Creepshow R, Prison Mate Luke, that impacts you a lot. That hurts you a lot. The death threats you receive, people doubting your grooming, that hurt you a lot. But if anyone else is mean to anybody else on the internet, well, they're just dramatic. Oh God, you're old enough to deal with mean words online, right? That's what you're saying. Whether you realize it or not, that is exactly what you're saying. If that's the the standard you're going to set for everybody else, you are under that too. You count for that too. Sorry, I don't make up the rules, you do. Could I add something onto that real quick? Cause I just can't let something go. Go. You, Rosa, you said you have fucking PTSD and trauma from the situation. You know who actually has trauma from this fucking situation? The fucking kids you failed. The kids who you allowed to be groomed because, oh, you're friends with a groomer. You didn't want to lose your spot with them. Well, you know what, Rosa? Those fucking kids have trauma. The only trauma you have is just being butthurt because somebody called you out on your bullshit. I have fucking trauma from being groomed, for being abused. But do you see me going over here saying like, oh, you know, it happened a long time ago, so it doesn't matter anymore. No, that shit sticks with you. And I hope this shit sticks with you for the rest of your fucking life. Unfortunately, I actually think that it will. Since y'all want to fucking be fucking bullies, since y'all want to verbally abuse and berate her, unfortunately, I think it will stick with her for the rest of her life. And I hope you're really fucking proud of the things you did. Since y'all want to talk about wanting to have justice for the victims, guys, let's have justice for the victims. You just created one today. You just created one in this call. Congrats. I hope you're proud. You know, I can also real quick point to the fact that you don't have PTSD over all this because, you know, the funny thing is, and here's here's something I've been asking just about everybody who keeps coming back because I'm genuinely curious and I can't really can get I a true please, answer. Please? I am not done speaking. I know that you're stupid. Clean out your ears before you genuinely make me angry. And I wind up doing something we both regret because I'd rather not. Just can I leave, please? I want an answer to my question, Mushmouth. I don't recall excusing you. The bell does not dismiss you, I do. Literally, why does he think he has any authority? Why does this guy think he has any authority? He's just some rando on the internet and he's like, the bell doesn't dismiss you, I do. Who are you? Who the fuck are you? I will leave this call right now, bitch, bye. You're a liar, is what you are. You're a liar, you have zero, 
zero survival instincts. If I stuck you in a jungle, you're trying to hug a tiger. This whole call makes me aggressively angry. This whole call makes me violently angry. But this clip in particular, this clip in particular makes me extra, extra aggressively angry. Because if you genuinely think that if you placed Rosa into a jungle and she went and was so gullible and so naive and so just nothing behind her eyes ass shit that she'd go and hug a tiger, what makes you think that she is fit to run a discord server as a moderator if you genuinely believe that what makes you think that she is fit for that and why are you getting mad at her at this point like two to three hours in the call because she's not fit you literally are saying that you don't think she's fit and yet still get mad at her for not doing her job what the fuck is the point of this whole call? What the fuck was the point? I just don't know about it. Oh, you don't know why you keep coming back? Okay, that's fine. It's the same asinine answer I keep getting from everybody else. They never know either. So maybe one day I'm going to hit you people so hard you'll be smart enough to stay down. I feel like I honestly like lost count of how many times this man just like threatens violence against this woman. Like this is like what, four or five times after telling her to kill herself, after saying that call your mom and then she'll hit you. Like how many times do you have to tell this woman that you want bad things to happen to her and that she is supposed to be violently hurt and violated? You're a fucking coward and you're a piece of shit. And this shit that you do, this predator hunting, this good shit that you do, man, throw it away. Throw it away. Whoever else wants to have, whoever else wants to have play Ring Around Rosie with the Moron, go for it. All right. All right. All right. Can, can, I, can I pop real quick? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I just want to go next because I, ha I have words, like very strong words. Okay. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be brief. Okay. I think Discord should just like shut the whole thing down. Fucking send this video to some representative at Discord and just shut the whole Senate server down, please. Please. This world would do well without it because people are literally like clamoring. They're like, I wanna talk, I wanna harass them. Please t pick me, pick me, choose me. Bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye. Y'all need therapy. Y'all need therapy y'all need to talk your shit with a professional therapist a psychiatrist who can help you with the traumas of your past so you don't take them out on some random bitch who just happens to stumble upon the fuck ass senate server y'all need help please get professional help. I see a therapist. It's fine. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with getting professional help. There's nothing wrong with getting professional help. But I'm watching this shit and I'm watching people clamoring and fiending and wanting to fucking harass this woman and it is craziness. I feel insane. I feel crazy. If you're watching this and you participated in this Senate server call and harassed her in any way, shape, or form, I am begging you, if you are not seeing a professional therapist yet, please, for the love of God and your own healing, get a therapist, please. And now you're all, oh, oh, please, please, please. No, please, don't tell my mom. You know, you sound like a child, right? You're my senior, for God's sake. Holy shit. And you act like this? I would expect a child to behave like this, not an adult. It's almost as if she might have an intellectual disability. <clears throat> no, sh wait, let me finish. I am being very nice to you. Bitch, ass. bitch, if this is nice, I don't want to see you angry. If this is nice, I do not want to see you angry. I'm not yelling at you. I'm not screaming at you. Yeah? Okay? To me, I was... I Lucy, stop it! Denial is a river in Egypt! Your husband <laughs> is gay! Bruh. Who is gonna break it to her and tell her... That you are yelling. You are screaming. You can't be serious right now. Yes, you are, bitch. Don't gaslight me. When you raise your voice, that means you're screaming. When you raise your voice, that means you're yelling. You are yelling and you are screaming. Just because you're saying you're not doesn't mean that you're not. Rosa, 
I am 28 years old. I'm currently sitting in my room full of Pokemon stuffed animals in a slowpoke Kiku, and I am more mature than you right now. Oh, this is the last clip that I transcribed. Um, I, I was, I, uh, after that, I, I just, a part of me died, and I was like, I'm done. I can't write this anymore. I'm done writing the call. I gave up transcribing after this point. After the slowpoke Kigu shit, I was like, fuck this. I, I can't, I'm done. I'm sick. And also, see for the situation from now on, don't even have opinions if you're biased. I mean, for fuck's sake, you're literally the biased motherfucker I ever seen. If I ever see you have an opinion, I swear to God, so everyone, everybody in the server is going to fucking smite you. Well, if you don't get <sighs> what? <laughs> You can't be serious. If you ever have an opinion, I swear to God, the whole Senate server, they gonna smite you. <laughs> Rose is in here. Oh, I don't want my personal life brought into it. Please don't call my mommy when you use your personal life as an excuse to not ban a child predator, which takes all five seconds. Remember, oh, you, you have chores to do. I don't care. I work 60 hours a week. I have a family I take care of. I have a secondary job. I run my own YouTube channel. I try to take care of other things that are not related to that, and I have time to do it. Why don't you? I objectively do more than you do, have more responsibilities, spend less time than you probably think online. You spend all day online, you do your goofy little doodles, and you might run a couple errands with your mommy who does not understand the garbage you do. So tell me what you did that was so important and so time-consuming that related to your real life that made it you couldn't click a button and hit ban. Y'all don't even know if she could even click a button and hit ban. Y'all don't even know that. Y'all don't even know that she literally said she wasn't a mod. But even if she was a mod, how much permission does she have to just ban someone? Y'all are assuming so much responsibility of this woman, but y'all have no fucking idea what her limitations were and whether or not she could have even banned someone if she wanted to. Can you give me a there genuine apology though? Please? Yes. Just, just, just genuine apology. Because I spent four years of that drama. All, all of my childhood was robbed away from me because of it. All I can I do is just give you an apology. All I can um, just say is that I'm sorry. Then give it. The point is, you're not going to get an actual answer from this idiot because she refuses to acknowledge what she's actually done. Instead, she'll say, I don't know. I just don't know. I told you earlier how people would start to like act like she doesn't give apologies or never said sorry or whatever. Literally, this is the point in the call where people just start to like meld the reality with like fiction. And it's like fucking weird because she literally says sorry every single time Endo asks her to say sorry. She said sorry the first time on her own volition without anyone prompting her to do so and i literally don't understand why people are like you're never gonna get accountability out of this bitch when she literally did she literally said sorry again it's not like endo needs to accept it endo is not entitled to accept any apology from rosa Endo could be like fuck that fuck that fuck that i don't want any apology i don't like any of them none of them spoke to me none of them were meaningful to me none of them gave me the closure that i wanted right and that's fine and valid but don't you fucking claim that she never gave you an apology or that she never acknowledged what she did she did she said sorry many times the truth of the matter is there's no culpability here that's why she doesn't want her mommy who is her caretaker who should be watching what she does on the internet because this person's in their 30s and incapable of taking care of themselves. No, that's not the focus. No, the focus is harassing her because she's incapable of taking care of herself and because we don't like her for whatever reason or we just want to bully someone who's disabled, we're going to try and get her mom in call. We're going to call her ableist slurs. We're going to slut shame her. We're going to fat shame her. We're going to threaten violence against her. We're gonna say that her friend doesn't care and that they'd rather let her literally die than get into a voice call. We're gonna threaten her, at least try to. That's the focus. I've been manipulated. I've been hurt. Mm -hmm. I've been treated like mm -hmm. shit. And the fact that you didn't do dick to these children on the server. I don't know what you were doing. Well, because yeah, your personal life, but what Lyle said there. He even all the even all the things he had to do in his everyday life, he still had time to care for them, unlike you. 
I don't understand this. In this case, you're basically enabling, enabling Nikopon to keep doing the same shit, constantly grooming children. In that case, that could, and that is a freaking crime. You could be freaking charged for child endangerment. I just don't yeah. even know her. I don't. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't think her. that's true. That's actually the biggest issue I, I have here in terms of irritation, other than the fact that um, Rose is a dumb dumpster her. slut. I didn't say if you knew somebody or not. Look, do you just drown out everybody mentally the minute you're having a meltdown about whether or not you get to say something? Sit down and keep your cock holster shut until you are spoken to. It's so obvious that not a single person who brought Rosa into this call gave a fuck about accountability, acknowledgement, and restorative justice. Not a single one of y'all gave a fuck about that. Especially not Leo Convoy, and especially not Hopeless Peaches. Not a single one of y'all. Because if you were responsible and you wanted closure for Endo, like you so claim you wanted to give to her, Nothing that just played, nothing that was just said would have happened. Y'all are irresponsible. And I'm gonna say this as someone who went through the court systems, as someone who matriculated through the court systems and got their abuser convicted of domestic assault. If you submitted anything like this to support a child's case of predation, they'd throw that shit out immediately. You fuck up kids cases this shit right here this shit ruins credibility ruins the ability for kids to actually get real fucking justice and it's all because y'all want to be irresponsible and just say slut shamey things because you want to it's irresponsible the but point is i don't even know i did I not mean stutter I did not stutter. I did not stutter i said you will be dismissed when i dismiss you the bell does not dismiss you child i do you will leave when I tell you you can leave. When other people have had their fill tearing into you for your immoral actions. When the victim here decides it's time for you to leave, then you will leave. I know you have some crayon drawings to do. They will wait. Literally stop even mentioning Endo. Stop mentioning any victim of Nekopon in vain. Because literally, you're fucking ruining their case right now. You are literally making a mockery of their fucking grooming by doing this shit. I'm so serious. You never cared about closure. You did not give a fuck about closure for Endo. If you gave a flying fuck about closure for Endo, none of this shit would have happened. I don't want to hear it. Nobody can fucking convince me otherwise. If you wanted to be, you wanted to be that saint that gave Endo closure, victims of Nekopon closure, this shit would have never happened. You are literally irresponsible as hell. The sad thing is that we can't even push anything on this person. I doubt anything will be prosecutable at this point. We have a hard enough time getting cops to even care about the predators running around. They're not going to care about this mush mouth empty skull moron. And um, that returns to the central question. Why the hell is this happening then? What's the point of this call then, Leo? The worst and best we can do, unfortunately, is just point out this is somebody you don't want in your circles. They not only do they sit there and they skew as a child predator, but they're also fetishizing LGBT people, which is just absolutely fascinating. I'm sure everybody who's part of that really just feels absolutely loved and cared for by that. So good job there. Real smart move. But that's all we can really do. The social accountability is all we really have left at this point. We don't have anything legally we can do. And the only thing I can do is try to find this person's parents and tell them to get this moron off the internet because they're using it in an abusive manner and put kids in danger because God forbid you not be uncomfortable for five seconds i'm also just realizing this now that um, i'm doing this right now leo talking about fetishizing the lgbtq community and how he cares so much about that and how everyone who's part of that community must feel so upset that rose has said that she wanted a queer friend despite her being queer fetishizing the lgbtq community because we don't want to even bother asking her if she's queer herself no that just wanting a queer friend that that's fetishizing the lgbtq community according to peaches according to leo according to everybody who just subscribed to that immediately um weren't you the same guy who said that if you found out that her parents were homophobic you wouldn't give a fuck and you wouldn't care if you outed her would be fine no caveats for her though 
Is that not exactly what you fucking said? You said you would not care if Rose's parents were homophobic. Do it again and I will find your family. I will tell them what you were doing. I will tell them all the nonsense you said. And usually I have a caveat if I find out like they're homophobes or something or they might hurt you. If I find out your parents hate gay people, I'm not going to care. So what makes anyone think that you care remotely about queer people? Don't grandstand. Answer the fucking question. Were you not just the one who said that you wouldn't give a fuck? Rosa is a disabled queer woman. You would not give a fuck if you found out that her parents are homophobic. You literally said that. Because this dumb cunt is actually so fucking annoying. So, little dumb cunt over there. You did, you did hear Endo crying before, right? <sighs> you are the dumb cunt. You can respond. I just can't help but feel what I just oh, can't you feel oh, myself. Shit. Uh, la, 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 la. I don't I don't care. I didn't ask how you I don't care. I didn't ask how you feel because I don't really care. What I was saying was is that that was actual real tears. You know the little bitch boy tears that you gave before when Lyo said he'd call your mommy and you started crying and begging. And then the moment Zaid started talking to you, you snapped right out of it. Because the thing is, is that you are absolute trash. You sit here talking about Zaid all the time. You're always like, oh my god, he's absolutely horrible. And the whole time you've pretended to have trauma. You don't. You pretend to have PTSD. You do not. As someone with panic attacks and PTSD and trauma, I can tell because you just sat there like uh, pretending to hyperventilate, which immediately snaps away the moment that uh, the questions go away from you. You pretend that you have nightmares because Zaid said mean things on the internet about fucking Star Wars. And then you sit there at the same time and say that trauma from being groomed should go away in a matter of days because, oh, you know, it's yesterday's news, famalam. Need I say anything? I think it's really fucking funny that, um... Back in 2022, I, I was I was fucking dogpiled by Peaches stands, by people who were really bad faith, who uh, didn't even care to look at what my video was trying to say, give me the benefit of the doubt, none of that. I I just got dogpiled. A lot of people started like doubting my abuse, you know, the things that like Peaches gets mad at for over her drama. And um, her video on me like really just was just catapulted like the idea that I never want to do YouTube again because the people here really fucking suck. And like the people here don't really care about what you're trying to say. If it's just like you can't con communicate it, even if it's a good intention message, even if it's like good natured, that video really Really solidified my dislike of the YouTube community, the dislike of the commentary community. Her video kind of killed my desire to be a creator and someone who is active on YouTube and puts out content because I saw how bad faith she was in her interpretation of my video and while I made mistakes in how I tried to communicate things and how I, whether I realized it or not, gate kept trauma, it's really fucking crazy to be in 2024, two years later, and just watching her do so much worse. It's crazy and it feels like, um, I don't I don't even I don't even know what to say about it. Like I don't know the words. It just feels like that it was empty. Like all that like reflection about like myself and how I interpret trauma and how I gatekeep trauma whether I realize it or not or how I communicate a message and how I need to be better and how I need to reflect. It's just like crazy when it comes down to the fact that the person who said all the things and like critiqued me and like said to do better just is revealed two years later to like have not given a fuck about anything that they critiqued me on and like is worse than I am behind the scenes. It's baffling. I've never had anything happen like that to me until this moment and like it boggles my mind. Like I, I'm really like, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't have words necessarily. I feel like I don't really know how to like describe this feeling. But it just feels like um, it was empty. Like that critique was empty. And I really took it serious. I really did. I, I really see the error of my ways. I see how that video was bad. And it really sucks. <laughs> I don't know.
editing Omnia here. I apologize if that last clip was uncomfortable for you to watch. It was honestly kind of uncomfortable for me to watch because I can very clearly tell by my own facial expressions and body language that I was feeling increasingly emotional and upset about the things Hopeless Peaches said, which made it very hard for me to articulate or communicate clearly how what they said in the clip prior made me feel, so I wanted to add this brief explanation in retrospect to clarify and debrief from this. I think the reason this part of the call upset me so deeply was because I felt really hurt by the critique video Hopeless Peaches made about me when it initially came out. Not because I can't take the critique, but because Peaches said that I had made the worst video they had ever seen in life, scrambled up clips to make my original video seem worse than it was, and though it is no fault of their own, their audience took it as the perfect opportunity to completely discredit the abuse I experienced, and what's worse, it was during a point in time where I couldn't say or debunk anything because the court case was still active at the time the video was released, and I didn't want to ruin my own case by talking too much about it. I don't know how else to say this, the timing was awful and I was going through hell as it was. It's hard enough to go through abuse and to levy criminal charges against your abuser in the court of law, but to then have hundreds and thousands of people speculating on your abuse and saying that you lied about it because you made a poorly worded video was just so, so burdensome for me and I was genuinely not in a good place at the time that video dropped on me and it was why I largely gave up on YouTube. It felt like a dog pile more than anything because their video garnered eight times the views my original video did and it didn't feel like it came from a place of listening and understanding, but rather a destructive and mean-spirited place. I mean, who says that a video that had largely good intentions and defends victims by challenging the idea that their situations are rarely covered with the levity they deserve is the worst video they have ever seen? But regardless, that's beside Besides the point, having it be revealed that the person who brought forth that criticism never believed it in the first place is so shocking to me. This voice call, the Rosa Ray Ramsey call, happened seven months after Hopeless Peaches dropped their gatekeeping trauma video on me. You would think someone could keep their morals consistent for at least a year or something, but they could barely keep it past six months. It's deeply disheartening and surprising to find this out, and to feel like a hypocrite who can't even uphold their own morals made me feel as though I am the worst person in the world for my video when they are actively telling individuals whether or not they can have PTSD, trauma, seizures, memory loss, and anxiety attacks is utterly alarming and feels as though I went through that hellish period of my life for absolutely no reason. I just really want to highlight the fact that you've been sat here completely unfazed about the fact that people who actually been affected by your actions are actually in distress and you do not give a shit and yet you've been sat here the whole time messaging blue crying because you're in call and no one's helping you through it but if you really wanted someone to help you through this call like you've been begging from blue that's well, why i say I one more time that- did i finish talking or did my mic just cut out i'm sorry is my mic working <laughs> sorry Lyo, is my mic working it sure is, kid. Oh wow, I'm so I'm I'm so amazed. That's that's so funny. Maybe you want to clean your ears out, little slut hole, because I didn't finish speaking. Need I say anything? Some of these clips just be speaking for themselves. I swear. So I was gonna say, if you actually wanted some help, instead of crying to Blue, who does not give a shit about how you feel one last time i can say you can always drag your mummy in here maybe she'll help uh let me just add this too uh i stopped caring as soon as you tried to say that there was some sort of time limit on trauma because yeah um got groomed 11 years ago still remember that shit remember that whole conversation from earlier yeah still kind of pissed yeah, you, you came in here and you pissed off everyone. Blue was being really kind to you. And now you think that you can sit there, like, DMing them for, like, the past, like, couple hours now, going, Oh, please, I am really upset. Can someone please help me through this? As, like, literally Endo is in here crying and you do not give a shit. And even when you were asked, could I have an apology? You just went, yeah. And then nothing. Complete silence. <laughs> I just wish. Well, I just I'm wish. just trying to do is collect my thoughts. You don't have any thoughts. 
<laughs> You've been collecting your thoughts for four hours, you little dumb slut. So Holy come God. on. Hey, hey slow brain. You don't need to collect your thoughts to say sorry. To just say well, that, it because that's that you collecting. The only thing I like can do is I'm say so, sorry. You collecting your thoughts is like me taking on a collecting Pokemon cards because I don't. You don't have any thoughts. You think you should even know what you're apologizing for because when Endo says, "What are you apologizing for?" You get quiet real quick. You go immediate hush mode. Things you don't know. You just think that apologizing is going to get people off your back. You coward. Unrelated to this clip, I just want to point out because I saw in the corner at this point in the call, they literally changed her name in the Discord server to oh. Slut Hole Nightmares. And y'all want closure for Endo, right? Y'all care so much about what Endo wants and what Endo needs. Please be fucking serious. Can I please go now? No, I told you you're done when I say you're done, and you're gonna buy that out because God knows your parents failed to raise you with any common sense. If I had a child that did the stunt you did, oh, buddy, they wouldn't find them. They would not find them. That's one thing I've absolutely picked up from my old man. If you pull some stupid crap like that, they might find your body in a marsh about 100 years from now. You heard that right. Yes, he did indeed say that he would have killed Rosa had she been his daughter for not banning a predator in a Discord server that she is not the owner of, that she may or may not have had permission to ban. Yes, kill, as in find body in marsh a hundred years from now. You'd kill your daughter over that? That's exactly why you don't have any. Um, but go ahead and tell everybody I just threatened you with that because I know you're too stupid to do that. You literally said that because I gave a hypothetical of me not caring if you got eaten by wolves, that that was a threat. So go ahead, yeah. tell everybody that's a threat. That'll be funny. Yeah, again, for the new people who have just joined, uh, yesterday's news today, this little dumb little cunt thought that saying hypothetically he wouldn't care if wolves tore her apart, that was a threat. Oh my god, Lyo Convoy, controller of wolves. I'm the wolf lord. This call is giving me a headache. I don't know how people sit in this shit and like enjoy their life. Like for four hours too, hearing Peaches being like, if he said hypothetically that wolves tore apart, it's a death threat. Lyle Convoy, controller of wolves. And then Leo being like, I am the wolf lord. Like y'all sit there three to four hours of just this shit. I know you're miserable. If you're in the Senate server to begin with, you're probably miserable. But like to be active in these calls, you have to be like depressed. Like something is like not right. You could be going on a walk. You could be like hanging out with a friend. You could be like drinking a cup of tea. You could be like meditating. But no, you choose to like listen to this. And I'm like concerned. I just wanted to point out something, um, dumb, dumb cunt. That's your new name now. Um, she's like, dumb, s s dumb, c s d d please put the drink down, <laughs> put the drink down. You're stuttering to call her dumb slut or dumb cunt. You can't even choose. You are that drunk. Put the shit down, please. How come you're allowed to be able to sit here in a, a situation that you're not even comfortable with for four hours, yet you couldn't send a message that would take less than a minute? <sighs> Come on. Sigh. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, you can't even say, oh my god, my, my personal life got in the way. Oh my god, I've got so many friends and so many things I to do. No. No. Yeah, I'm gonna I put that on a t-shirt. I'm gonna put yeah. that on a t-shirt with your face on it and just say, I just don't know. Because that's your freaking slogan, you pathetic piece of shit. Something different. I'm gonna put her face on a t-shirt next to a coat hanger and in red text it's gonna say, I'm a survivor. <laughs> <laughs> well, as, as a person who's seen her face, you may not want to put that on any t-shirt unless you're trying to scare something away I, mean, I will personally i will personally help fund that for you i will personally help fund that for you yeah that's beautiful that's beautiful abortion jokes that's beautiful right peaches okay come on dumb cunt answer my question your personal life isn't getting in the way of this conversation actually i haven't even heard your mom for the past four hours does she just avoid you as much as she can i mean i personally don't blame her i would i mean I just well yeah but apparently her mom got in the way because her mom is the only person who bothers speaking to her she's got the face only a mother could love so reprieve 
Reprieve! Guys, this is the last thing that Peaches says before Rosa leaves. Oh my god. We're done. This is the last thing she says before Ponder Sprocket intervenes. And oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so happy. I'm so happy we are at this point in the call. I'm elated because this is the point where she finally shuts the fuck up because Ponder intervenes and is like, what the hell is, what the fuck was all that? So we're getting to the end. Thank god. I don't have to hear her voice anymore. Yeah, not even that. Not that. Clearly not even that. <laughs> jump in no, what, no, with one. No, I, need, oh, well, I need to jump in. Sorry, and go, ahead. Me. go ahead. Go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. Admittedly, I haven't been here for very long, so I didn't hear the start of the conversation, but I do need to ask. Do you guys actually think that the throwing of insults and blatant- I, I'm not even gonna get, like, sugarcoated, this is bullying. Do you really think that this is helping? Or do you think that this is just gonna make Rose feel like she's the victim in this situation? <laughs> Reprieve. Reprieve. Common sense. Common sense. I'm so happy. I'm literally so happy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like, I'm not- I'm not defending Rosa at all. I don't really know much about what she's done aside from, like, she was dismissing someone being a predator. What- what the fuck prompted all this bullshit? Do you want an answer to that? Yes. I want an answer to okay. that. Okay. Well, what prompted this is Rosa not taking it seriously when we have one of the victims of this predator in here telling them exactly what they did, constantly making excuses for why what they did was fine, essentially, telling us that um, having a couple mean tweets thrown your way is equal to that of being preyed on as a child by a predator because they're equally bad. Going on tangents like that, never taking any accountability for what they're doing or what they are saying, and never being able to answer directly any questions they are being asked. So accountability for having bad opinions opinions that you disagree with not bad opinions that i disagree with more the fact that they let a child predator run loose in their server for eight months it's not my server it's rebecca's it's a server that you had the ability to ban them in actually it's not it's not how i run it it's how rebecca runs it she's in charge of the server yes rosa yes bitch yes i'm not saying that rosa was perfect okay i'm not saying that rosa couldn't have done more but for her to be punished this severely in this call is not ethical at all whatsoever and i am so happy that she is now being given the opportunity to just be like bitch no it's not my server. I may not even have the permissions to have done it. Not that it's good that Nekopon was in the server. Not that it's okay that Nekopon was allowed to be in that server for eight months. But in terms of egregious parties, Rosa is the least of your concerns. And I'm so glad that she finally has the ability to say something and someone not fucking interrupting her. It's crazy how all it takes is one person to say, hey, what the hell? All it takes is one person. Lyo, I've seen videos where people try to prove that someone's a predator and it doesn't get across. How mm -hmm. do you know that it was proven to Rosa that this person was a predator and she believed and knew that? Yeah, I was literally gonna say that we've seen literally everything that was sent to Rosa. That doesn't prove that she acknowledges it <coughs> as being true. I've been sent bullshit before that I didn't believe. Bro, are you serious right now, bro? Peaches, please. We saw all the evidence that Rosa received. We've seen everything, literally everything that was sent to Rosa. That's how we know. <laughs> Two seconds ago, you were saying that she has a face that only her mother could love. Editing Omnia here, can I just add confidently? She had no hesitation whatsoever two seconds ago to be calling her a dumb cunt out the wazoo and now she's literally incapable of even saying one full sentence. And now suddenly you seem so disarmed. You seem so meek and frazzled. I literally seen everything. Bitch. Do you honestly think that all of the ad hominems and active bullying, because that is what this is, is helping the situation? Yeah, I can't help but agree with Ponda. <laughs> There's Harley. <laughs> There's Harley TBS. <laughs> where were y'all? <laughs> where, where were you? <laughs> I'm just gonna leave right now. So much for y'all guys trying to help. So, goodbye.
Don't yep, think there she goes. <laughs> this part of the call goes crazy because all it took was nine seconds. That clip was nine seconds. Obviously, I clipped out all the extra fucking shit that I didn't want, but like, it took that amount of time for her to finally leave. She was begging. She was begging the entire call. She was begging to be let out the whole call and it took not more than a few seconds for her to just be like all right fuck y'all fuck y'all bye and i i'm just flabbergasted i just don't have words like i cannot believe this shit i don't think they would have taken a single thing you were gonna say on board because they couldn't even process or say what they did wrong the victim wanted an apology the most basic manipulator could give a bullshit apology and she couldn't give a, the victim a goddamn thing she couldn't give the victim a sorry that was meaningful in any sort of way do you think that if we treated her with the kid gloves that she would have been able to give a proper apology or that she would have taken in a single thing that was said. Y'all didn't even try. Y'all didn't even try with the kid gloves. Y'all didn't even try to understand anything that she said, anything that she asked, anything that she gave you. Like anytime she asked a question, you'd automatically assume something. Or anytime she explained something, you'd automatically assume something else. She's like, I want LGBTQ plus friends. You're like, oh my God, so you fetishize the LGBTQ plus community, huh? That's so bad faith. She's literally queer. And just cause you want friends from a certain community doesn't mean that you're fetishizing that whole community. Rose is like, how long ago was it? And y'all are like, so you think that trauma has an expiration date? That's literally you got it. You literally did not give her a chance. So if you're like, oh, you really think that if we handled her with kid gloves, she would have been any different? Y'all didn't even try to be nice. Y'all didn't even try. And you know what was crazy is I literally reached out to Rosa as a result of this video. And you want to see what it's like when you're nice to someone and you actually ask them things and you actually like give them the benefit of the doubt and allow them to explain themselves and give them grace and the ability to say, what they want to say without like pressuring them or without dogpiling them or without harassing them you want to know what it's like and what she would have been like had y'all maybe tried that approach wait until the end of this editing omnia here i recently decided to release my interview with rosa as a concluding video to this series on the rosa ray ramsey call because this video is looking like it will probably total something like two hours or more worth of watch time and i really want to hold space and dedicate an entirely separate video for Rosa's perspective and to also talk in depth about what has since come out in the aftermath of this call being publicized, including documents that were released regarding Hopeless Peach's involvement in the Senate server, Rosa call, and other related situations. Those things will probably be covered in a part three, basically covering the aftermath of this call and any recent developments in the situation, which I anticipate to have out sometime in April. Okay, Back to the video. At that point, any sympathy for her had already gone. She could have just said sorry. The thing about this woman is that she she just doesn't get it. This is the part of the call where I am like, y'all are trying to rewrite history. I literally watched this whole thing, transcribed three hours and seven minutes of it. She said sorry many times. You could go back in this video and find it many times. She said sorry many times. No one can accept Rosa's apology besides Endo. But don't say that she didn't say it at all, because she did. Stop trying to rewrite history. I know what fucking happened in this call. It literally is in this call. Jumping in a call and being like, you're fat or whatever. That doesn't help the argument, right? <laughs> you only serve to make that person feel like the victim. Damn. Harley, you were in here since the fat shaming shit. Like, damn. It's hard to be nice with a pedophile sympathizer. And it's also the fact that Rosa is 30 years old. They have lived on this earth seven years longer than I have. They are still living at home because they get off their ass and get a life of their own and they think it's fine. They think it's just fine to be a pedophile, pedophile sympathizer. They said it wasn't a big deal that someone got groomed. They couldn't even say, I'm sorry you got groomed. All they could say was, oh, my feelings, oh, my feelings, and oh, I don't want my personal life involved with this. Yet again, blatant misrepresentation of the situation. Blatant misrepresentation. If I can chime in here real quick, is everybody familiar with what belief perseverance is or what the backfire effect is? This is Scritus. Don't know if people know who he is. He used to be Hopeless Peaches' friend. I think he used to go by Mufasa, like the fucking Lion King. I don't know shit. <laughs> 
I just know that uh, we had some disagreements in the past, but it's fine. I don't care anymore. Had to do with the Hopeless Peaches drama a long time ago. I don't think Skritis is friends with Peaches anymore though. And I think it's because of this call, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Because I'm... you guys are so adversarial, you make yourselves the enemy. You yeah, make you yourselves make unapproachable. Like the I'm, I'm not even, you know, the one being yelled at and I feel bad for this person. Sam. Call me a bitch for this take. A part of me just feels like it's a little cowardly to just be yapping so much all of a sudden, flapping your gums so much all of a sudden, when like Harley literally said that they were there since the fat shaming shit and said nothing until after Ponder said something. And I understand when someone else speaks up, it makes it easier for you to speak up, but for you to be like, yeah, same. And talking so much is like crazy. Cause I'm like, where were you? It just seems a little cowardly in my opinion for you to have waited and waited and waited to be honest i don't think that harley would have said shit and would have said jack had ponder not said anything i'm serious had ponder not fucking been the first person to say something i don't think harley would have said shit part of me also feels like scritus wouldn't have said shit i understand that when someone speaks up first the bar is lowered it's easier but you're in this call you're in this vc as a large creator who has the ability to be like no and you choose not to until someone else does it for you that may be controversial people might be like nia you just have a hate boner for harley tbs i don't I just truthfully feel like if you're in this space, you have a responsibility to speak your mind and say, I'm not okay with this. And if you were there since the fat shaming shit and you're claiming that you weren't okay with the fat shaming shit and you know Leo and you know Peaches and there's no barrier to you saying what you want to say, I think it's a little cowardly for you to not say anything until someone else does. And that's why I truthfully feel like Harley would have been an inactive bystander the entire call had Ponder not said something. I truthfully feel like that. And it's just a little weird to me that they're saying so much now in this part of the call when like they had since the fat shaming clip to say something. Editing Omni here, just wanted to pop in and add some meaningful context that may be helpful surrounding this topic regarding Harley TBS. I think my main point of contention is the amount of space Harley and Skritis begin to take up in the conversation at the very end, despite claiming that they felt bad for Rosa throughout the course of them listening to the call, which had to be at least an hour or two into the last half. I personally found it slightly obnoxious of them to be talking and interrupting each other to try and make their opinions known, when I think the call would have been much more productive and bearable had they simply spoken up the moment they started to feel that the call was going badly or in a destructive direction. That being said, I wanted to actually showcase some DMs between me and Harley to indicate the fact that these sentiments were communicated directly to Harley far prior to this video being released. Here are the DMs in question. Harley approached me on February 16th stating, Hey Nia, saw your tweet about Peaches in the Senate call and thought I had some important information for you if you are interested. I replied the same day stating, Oh, uh, what's up? Harley didn't reply to me for a couple days and at that point I had finally listened to the Rosa call in full and was both deeply disturbed and disappointed by the actions and inactions of the people and creators that I knew were present within the call, especially so because I didn't feel like anyone was forthcoming about it until the call was literally publicized and everyone could see what occurred during the call. So at that point I followed up with Harley on February 18th stating, hey sorry just following up, what was it you wanted? Wanted to tell me? Harley hadn't replied for 30 minutes, so I simply decided to give them the reason I was feeling upset and uncomfortable with them. I said, hey dude, I actually finished listening to the entire call and I feel pretty uncomfortable with the things that were said and done in it, and I understand your reasoning behind why you and Skritis didn't say anything until Ponder Sprocket spoke up about it because you explained your reasoning near the end of the call, but if you don't have anything you want to tell me, I think I'm going to distance myself from you for my own comfortability. Harley then replied, hey uh, 
Ponder and I were DMing at the time of the call before she spoke up and also were active in text chat disagreeing, but I was late into the call about 5 to 10 minutes before Ponder spoke up if I had to guess, and so I didn't jump straight into commenting in the discussion. That was actually relevant to what I was going to say as it led to me leaving Senate and cutting ties with Peaches and Leo, causing Peaches to reach out to my personal friends and ask them for dirt on me to expose me. To this day, it's one of two Senate calls I joined and I have never been part of that community or complicit in the discussion. I actually only joined because Skritis messaged me and informed me of how bad it was. For context, I was actually the first to say something as I approached Ponder in DMs when I noticed she was in call shocked with what was said. And then Harley sent a screenshot of a DM they sent to Ponder Sprocket where they said, what the fuck is going on in Senate, oh my god. I tuned in and holy shit. Jumping in here to state my opinion, while I think it's good that Harley did this, I think it would have been more effective if Harley said this or asked this in the call itself or to Leo or to Peaches or to any of the people who were actively participating in the Rosa call because then it would have at least disrupted what was going on and forced the main actors to explain why they were behaving in the way that they were. Harley being the first to voice concern is great and I want to give space for us to acknowledge that, but the person Harley chose to voice said concern to was not the best considering the fact that Ponder wasn't one of the main actors of the call and likely didn't have the context that Leo, Peaches, Blue, Leia, or any other main actor could provide. Harley ended their piece by stating, In closing, you are free to take any interpretation from my actions that you wish, though I believe the evidence speaks for me, and I do not have any shame in my decision to speak against Senate in every opportunity I have been given and that behavior is also consistent in that call. If you would like to cut ties with me over said call, then you are free to and it is your prerogative, but I am not going to fight my case when I have acted in good faith and I am not going to argue or repeat history again. I think you're chill in spite of our prior issues, not sure if this is correct verbiage, and I've said enough. I replied, okay, my closing thoughts on this are, while it's great that you were the first to say something about it and you purportedly have only been in two senate calls and you don't associate with them anymore and you left and you spoke up against them and all these great things, I'm still personally uncomfy with the whole situation. I'm not asking for your case or to defend yourself or whatever. I'm not looking to argue with you or anything like that. I'm simply speaking for myself and what I feel. What I think and feel is that there were plenty of opportunity to intervene at any time earlier than that. I feel like it's important to be an active bystander, especially when I feel like something is wrong. You're not responsible for changing people's minds or other people's actions. Just like I was the first to tell prison mate Luke not to include the suicide baiting part of his video on hopeless peaches, yet he did it anyway. That's not my responsibility, and I hope you know that. Either way though, for it to have gone on that long, for you to have known that they were making jokes about her being fat like two to three hours into the call and still said nothing until much later slash only after Ponder said something. I don't know. I'm like just uncomfortable. I've pretty much decided to unfollow every mutual on Twitter that I know who was in the call indiscriminately. You can continue following me if you choose to. I also have no hard feelings if you choose to unfollow me as well, but that's the choice I feel most comfortable with. I haven't spoken to Harley directly or privately since this message was sent. People have been giving their patience and their time to talk to her but she keeps on making excuses. There's only a limit to how many excuses a person can make before they pissed off. You know what I'm saying or not? We are giving you the time for our day. We are letting you speak. We're giving you mm. our time and, you know, our patience but you can't do, you know? You know what I'm saying or not? I'm afraid I, I do not. I'm afraid I don't. None of us gave her any patience. I think that it's not correct to say that she wasn't given any patience by anybody. Blue gave this person a lot of patience. A lot of patience, like three hours of patience. Stop the cap! Leo's perception of time is deeply flawed. <laughs> deeply flawed. Like, within, like, 30 minutes of this call, Blue was like, my patience is gone. So, for you to be, like, three hours of patience is literally crazy. Like, your perception is, like fully off from reality like truthfully blue got mad and said that they have no more patience for rosa at 30 minutes into the call because of that whole how long ago was it wasn't it just once upon a time ago that happened 30 minutes into the call you want to check me go the fucking full call is linked below the archive of the full call is linked below go to 31 minutes and tell me i'm wrong blue gave patience 
for 30 minutes. Leo, your perception of time is fucked. Literally stop the cap. Okay, well, well gold star for blue. Most of us were not patient with her. I Nobody certainly else. wasn't. I yeah. certainly wasn't for the brief time that I talked. I'll get, I'll fucking I, own that I shit. I wasn't. I, Hell I, yeah, I, 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 was, cool. I was an unapologetic oh, cool. asshole and I thought it was fucking hilarious, so. <laughs> oh, so, oh, so. Right, Peaches? Can you breathe? Are you okay? <laughs> Oh. And it's also, it's also like, it, it also feels like intimidation. Like, I know your mom's number. I know I'm sorry, where that you was live. The, that I was directed towards else. me. I would sure like to be able to respond to it if that's yeah, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, so because of the nonsense Rosa has pulled and the fact that they made it very clear that they are willing to put children in danger by having somebody around a server that they could remove, whether they could get okay for it or not isn't really my point here, but they could remove. But this person is, in fact, her handler. She needs to be brought aware of it. Wait, but she's an adult, right? Yeah, if she's the handler. Like, that implication alone indicates that Rosa may have an intellectual disability and needs a handler. But, like, if, if they don't have an intellectual disability and you're just contacting their mom, what the fuck is their mom gonna do? They're 30. Little does Ponder know, she literally does have an intellectual disability. And people were saying ableist ass shit to her, no matter what, even though they knew that she had an intellectual disability. And everyone fucking knew that and didn't say anything. Leo knew that and didn't stop anything. Peaches knew that and didn't change anything. Everyone who was participating actively in this beratement towards Rosa knew she had an intellectual disability. Everyone who was trying trying to get her mom and call knew she had an intellectual disability and it is insane that no one did shit about it. I've seen these kind of cases before where people will, generally speaking, only pretend to take responsibility if it means like, hey, get off my back already. Clearly, she's already showing, based on her own actions, she is not going to learn. The only way she's going to stop is if she deletes her Twitter and stays off the internet voluntarily, or if someone informs her mom and she has it taken away from her. Again, why would her mom have the ability to take it away from her? Yeah, she's an adult. She's a grown yeah. adult. Unless she has a learning disability and needs a caregiver. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I will make the statement that I didn't call her anything except retarded, and I did that maybe like 12 times, admittedly. Uh, but you're right, it wasn't necessary. But for the point that I was making, I didn't really care if it was necessary or not. I thought it was funny. Well, no, I, I acknowledge I acknowledge that I did not need to. I said so because it was funny. I remember making a tweet about this exact thing like a long, long time ago where I was like, if you have to like say slurs and like be racist and like be a shitty human being, being to like be funny like you're not funny and like i want to find that tweet and like put it up here if i can because like dude if you can't be funny without like saying the r slur comedy is dead you're not fucking funny sir just just stop trying to make people laugh you're failing like get a better sense of humor because truthfully saying slurs and being shitty is not funny rosa said to Lyo <laughs> in the first call that she was on the spectrum mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Is that is that exactly, true? Did exactly. she actually did she actually say she was on the spectrum in the first call? Yeah, she did. Well now I feel bad. Oh now you feel bad. Oh now you feel bad, Coyote. Maybe don't call people the R slur then. Just don't. So you don't have to feel bad. Because it was funny. Was it worth the joke? Was it worth the laugh? So did you you so you guys did background check background check Rosie when it comes to the disability or not and figure out whether or not their disability affects them talking to p tons of people or with insults or shouting right It doesn't matter if you're talking to a bunch of people or one on one like she had it okay. with me twice. Can I finish? Yes, that I finish. Am I allowed to? Did you did you preface it? Did you say, "Hey guys, this person has this ability. Keep that in mind when talking to them." I'm not even the person who brought this person into this call. What the hell? Oh my god, no way. Hold on. Hold one. 
wait a minute, you can't use that excuse because this is your server and what goes on in your server is your responsibility. You can't be like, well, Zaid was the one who brought Rosa into call. You can't get mad at me and in preface the fact that she has a mental disability. It's your server. You want to get mad at Rosa for not banning a predator in a server that's not even her own and you don't even know if she had permission to ban them and you can harass her for four fucking hours and have no hesitation about it. But when it's you and your server and you're found out to have been harassing a disabled woman for four hours with fat shaming, with slut shaming, with threats of violence. Now it's suddenly I'm bringing her in a call. It's not my responsibility. I wasn't the one who brought her in. So I couldn't have even prefaced it. Even though you were there from the beginning, you could have prefaced it. Whether you were there from the very jump or at any point that you started speaking in the call, you could have said, by the way, guys, I'm here now. Rosa is disabled. She has a mental disability. Keep that in mind when talking to her. It is your server. You can't be like, oh, it's not. I didn't bring her. I Shut the fuck up. No. Okay, I'm answering um, because and, and did you did, oh did you know about God. it? Can I talk? Am I allowed to talk? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I did. And here's the reason why I personally don't see much of an issue outside of maybe the words Coyote used. Full disclosure, I used once, and it's a word I'm trying to get out of my vocabulary, so I apologized immediately. No. 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 That's not why you apologized. That's not why you apologized. I could play the clip again. I transcribed that part. I know what you said. You want me to play it? You are blatantly misrepresenting why you said sorry. And I'll play it for you right now. Don't fucking know. You can't lie. It's recorded, right? Go ahead. Play the clip, editing Omnia. Play the clip. I asked you where I you know. are right now, you mushed mouth retard. Where are you right now? Actually, I apologize again for calling you that because, again, people with actual mental handicaps are a lot smarter than you. So where are you right now? Tell me. That's not why you said sorry. You dead ass verbatim said, and I'm sorry for calling you that because people with actual mental handicaps are a lot smarter than you. You said sorry because people with actual mental handicaps. Shut the fuck up, Leo. I do not see how having the uh, disability, for lack of a better word, of being on the spectrum impacts somebody's moral decisions. The gag is, it doesn't. But the thing is, it makes it so that people understand the world around them in different ways than people who are neurotypical. And because of that, they are less able to do certain things that neurotypical people are. Or they'll interpret a situation differently than someone who is neurotypical. It changes their understanding of the world around them and how they can't help but to understand the world around them. And for you to not be able to shift that perspective and understand that this person with a disability is more likely to understand this in a way that's different than mine and I need to take into account how they might understand the situation. You can't do that and that's why this shit show even happened. You placed standards upon Rosa that is typical for someone who doesn't have a disability and got mad at her for not aligning with those standards. And it's like you knew, you literally knew, and you admit to knowing that she couldn't ever fucking fit those standards because she is intellectually disabled. You literally suck, Leo. Leo, you suck. It can also affect your understanding of the um, world and and, and, the any, and even that then things have and on it. To empathize. Uh, and and so even then, I don't really think it reflects we do, we well on time, anyone please. in here when we have a, a person on the spectrum and then there's a bunch of people calling them retarded. It, Hold on, like it doesn't look good, right? I it doesn't look good. Harley, it isn't good. The fact that these people care more about optics and what it looks like, what it appears like, is crazy. It's not what it looks like, Harley. It's what it is. It's not good. It's actually very bad.
Look, look, real quick. I understand that that does not look good. I was not aware they were on the spectrum. I probably should have asked, and I probably would have conducted myself differently in that respect when if I had known that information. Personally, I don't think mental disability yeah. should affect somebody's on, decision on if hold on pyro i understand where you're coming from but at the same time i won't call somebody who actually suffers from mental disabilities retarded as an insult i only do that to people who don't have fucking disabilities just as a general rule some people might find that ridiculous but that's just the way that i view things Again. this is the senate these are the types of people who occupy the space. Yes, they think it's fine to call people the R slur if they don't think that they actually have a mental disability. It's fine if you call anyone else who doesn't actually have a mental disability the R slur, but like once you find out that someone actually has a mental disability, that's like bad. Like suddenly that's ableist now. Level with me, Coyote. If you thought about the fact that it was bad altogether to call anyone the arsler, you wouldn't be caught in this position, right? You wouldn't be feeling bad, right? Because you would have never said the slur to begin with, and then you wouldn't have had to find out later that she actually is mentally disabled, right? And then you wouldn't have to feel bad. Think about it. Level with me. If you thought that it was bad to say it at all, you wouldn't have said it at all, and then you wouldn't have had to feel bad when you found out that she is actually mentally disabled, you stupid bitch. I wasn't trying to take anything away from Endo. She's the one who needs to be comforted right now because she's going through so much worse. Yeah, and this argument isn't making her feel any better, just so you know, guys. Like, she's freaking out right now, saying that no, it's her okay. fault that this is happening, so... No, 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 Stop. Bring her into a separate call. That way you can get them calmed down. Well, None of this like is their she fault. Is. She's, she's just reading the chat. Right. Like then, everyone's then, you need, then you need to get your friend away from the chat and you need to focus on something else. This is my server. I will handle this. Do y'all see how crazy this is? All of a sudden, Leo is so responsible, right? This is my server, guys. Let's protect the victim, right? But two seconds ago, you were like, oh, I didn't preface it because I was the one who brought her in the call. But now it's your server and you'll handle it because you're so great. But like when people were dogging you for not telling everybody that Rosa's literally on the spectrum, um, I didn't bring her in a call though. Don't blame me. But now all of a sudden it's your server because you can act like a savior all of a sudden. So you want to take that role. You want to, yeah, I'm the best guy. I'm a God-fearing man all of a sudden. But when it, you look bad, it's suddenly, I didn't put, I didn't, I didn't bring her in a call, guys. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me. I didn't bring her in a call. Bullshit. Let me go ahead and start talking now since apparently everybody wants to concerning this. So a few things here, specifically to Harley, and that was... Grittus, I think. I know you guys aren't here very often, but I want to explain something about how this room works. If you take issue with what somebody is doing, voice it. It should not have taken Ponder coming in here and being louder to get my attention to let me know that you two also don't have an issue, have an issue with this. If you take I only issue, tuned into the conversation up. because I, uh, I was listening for a little bit and it kept getting a I lot worse as the call went on. Down. Going forward, if that happens again and you're worried about speaking out because of XYZ, my DMs are open. This is a server where you can beef with people if you want to and you can talk it out don't do cloak and dagger here and if you're worried about your opinion coming out there don't be the worst you might get is some people will disagree with you for the most part in the call itself scritus says something similar to what i'm about to say right now but like if you really think that the worst that'll happen is that someone will just disagree with you that's like blatantly false because this entire call is proof that that's not true and that if you don't agree with someone, you can and will be at the brunt of a fucking dog pile with 60 people in call watching you get bullied for four hours. Leo, stop capping. Literally, cap. The worst that'll happen is that people will disagree with you. Then what the hell was this? What the fuck? What do you call this? What is this? Is this a, just disagreeing with someone? This is just a disagreement. We just disagree, right? Be fucking for real. 
And if I was someone walking in here and didn't know you, liar, I would see someone saying, I'm going to call your mother and you're fat and you're retarded. And I'd go, I don't really want that to happen to me. So why, why would I want to tune in and join the discussion, right? Literally, please, Harley, just stop saying, like, just say the R slur. People know what you're talking about when you say the R slur, okay? You don't need to say the actual fucking word to, like, portray what you're trying to say. One. Two, this doesn't work as an excuse or, like, reason or justification as to why you didn't intervene because you literally prefaced it by saying, if I didn't know you, Laya, which you do. You do. And you're in his server, actively participating in it now. This doesn't work for you. You literally just said, if I didn't know you, I wouldn't want to intervene. But you do know him. So why didn't you intervene? I'm going to say right now, the, the, in, uh, as far as the record is concerned, Coyote Lovely was the one who said retarded. He said it 12 times. He regrets it because it turns out the person turned out to be on the spectrum. He I did not know that at the time. We... There you go. And the record says, why the fuck does that matter? The fact that you did it to begin with is crazy. Being like, I didn't know that at the time. Suddenly that makes it better. Bye. <laughs> Just. I think that the insults is a ridiculous place to draw the line. No, I think and you that, can insult someone. Like, no, I think you, you can call someone idiotic, or I think you can call someone you fucking my illogical or brain. Can, I, can you, can can you I please let Eaton finish? Can I finish my thought? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I honestly think because I'm not on YouTube that often, I find it really fascinating to see, like, other creators interacting with one another, and, like, Keaton and, like, Leo and Harley just, like, interacting right now. That That is such a funny interaction to be like, actually, I think it's fine if you insult people. And I'm like, uh, what? And then Heaton's like, shut the fuck up. And then Leo's like, can you fucking let Heaton finish? And then Harley's like, oh, oh. Okay. It's so funny, like, watching art commentary community channels interacting from a third party perspective is so funny to me. I don't know why. I think, I think the insults is where we're drawing the line, the ad hom, I think is ridiculous because in a normal situation where this is a normal kind of debate, I would agree with you 100%. I would, I'd be like, yeah, that's too far. This is not that, like, very transparently. This is a person who openly faked a panic attack while being confronted about actively letting uh, pedophiles occupy a space and who pretended to cry on live stream about it. I think what's crazy is that this is the exact same shit that y'all got on Luke about. You weaponize your trauma. So y'all are being like, you're faking a panic attack. You're fake crying you're weaponizing your trauma you fake your nightmares to get people to feel sympathy for you you don't have to act to get people to care about you that is literally the exact same shit y'all got mad at luke for in the hopeless peaches drama and here y'all are doing the exact same shit literally verbatim the exact same shit have y'all not learned shit have y'all not learned shit? Peaches, you were on the receiving end of that and here you are perpetuating that harm. Hurt people hurt people. That is literally what I learned as a result of this call. Hurt people hurt people. There is a point where yes, a calm conversation can be had. I have no problem with character assassination of someone who actively downplayed the grooming of children. And I think the idea that saying things that are incredibly mean to them, like calling them a whore and stupid, I think the fact that that's where the line's being drawn is insane. You know what else is insane? The fact that this call is done. I can't even celebrate. Like, it's over. That was that was it. That was the full recording. I'm sure there was more after this. Um, I clipped out a lot of shit that I didn't think was necessary. Like, anything that had to do with Zaid and Star Wars, I was like, this is irrelevant. Fuck that. Throw that shit out. But um, if you want the full call, it's down below. I'll link the archive of it. Check me if you need. It's all there. Um... And now I, I I will join um Karilla Kuma on the bed because I I need to lay down after this. Thanks for watching.
Well, that took decades off of my lifespan and probably a good few years off of yours. Thank you again for sitting through this absolute nightmare with me, and most importantly, I really hope that I made it abundantly clear to everyone that neither Leo Convoy nor Hopeless Peaches are the creators that they like to tout themselves as being publicly. This isn't illustrated more clearly in anything than the Rosa Call. Furthermore, Leo Convoy's Discord server, the Senate, is absolutely not worth regarding as a place that genuinely helps victims of grooming or predation in any meaningful way. Regardless of how culpable Rosa was in the Necopon situation, I can't think of any justifiable reason behind subjecting her to the ableism, fat shaming, slut shaming, and threats of violence Rosa had suffered throughout the length of this call. I've already received a good handful of comments that I can only assume are Senate members attempting to justify the call by saying that the call happened a year ago and that the server has since changed the way voice calls are structured. The question I think we should all be asking ourselves is, why did calls have to get this bad for the Senate to realize there may be a problem and begin to take action? Why hasn't there been a formal apology given to Rosa for putting her through such vile treatment? And if they felt so bad about this like they claim they do, why is everyone in the server constantly trying to downplay it by going on about how it was a year ago? A year, shockingly, is not that long ago. And to be fair, it's not uncommon for Peaches and Leo to bring up shit that happened or mistakes people made years ago whenever they're trying to discredit people. How is this any different? Just kidding, trick question. It's not. It's because this call is fucking deplorable, sickening, and absolutely unjustifiable by every means. It makes y'all look like shit, and it's because what happened in it is so inexcusable and awful. It reveals the fact that Hopeless Peaches and Leo Convoy couldn't give less of a fuck about true justice and accountability for victims, but rather to bully anyone they dislike in front of a complacent audience. I am personally disgusted and horrified by the actions of this call and feel cheated that both Leo and Peaches dare to pretend that they are decent people with fair critiques and pure intentions. Above all else, please send your support to the victims of Necopon like Endo and the victim of this call, Rosa Ray Ramsey. With that being said, I will catch y'all next time. Bye! Thank you.